Today, we're going to build a simple recommendation system using collaborative filtering with Scikit-Learn. We'll use the MovieLens dataset, which contains movie ratings from users. Let's dive right into the code. Let's set up the environment by installing necessary libraries. We will use pandas for data analysis and manipulation in Python, NumPy for scientific computing in Python, and Scikit-Learn for various machine learning algorithms for classification, regression, clustering, and more. It will be used for calculating user similarity in this recommendation system. Now, let's import the necessary libraries. Pandas and NumPy I have already explained. Requests we will use to make HTTP requests and download MovieLens dataset from the web URL. Zip file we will use for extracting files from zip archives. Model selection from Scikit-Learn provides functions for splitting data into training and testing sets, and it is used for evaluating the model's performance on unseen data. This pairwise submodule provides functions for calculating similarity measures between data points. We will use it to calculate cosine similarity between users. Next, we'll load the MovieLens dataset. This dataset contains movie ratings from users. First, we define a URL pointing to the location of the MovieLens dataset. Here we are using the requests library to make a get request to MovieLens dataset URL. This downloads the data in chunks to improve efficiency for larger files. The response object stores the downloaded data. We then open this ML latest small zip file in write binary mode. It iterates over the downloaded data in chunks using iter content function. For each chunk, it checks if there's data and then writes it to the open file using file.write. Then we are extracting the zip file here using the zip file library. We call the extract all method on the zip file object, which extracts all contained files into the current directory. Finally, using pandas library, we read the extracted CSV files and loading data into data frames. Ratings.csv is loaded into a data frame named ratings. Movies.csv is loaded into a data frame named movies. This use calls parameter specifies the columns to load, user ID, movie ID, rating, and title. As we can see, our MovieLens dataset is loaded into separate data frames successfully for ratings and movies information. Let me print the ratings data frame so that we can see how it looks like. It contains information about user movie interactions. As we can see in the output, there are user ID, movie ID, and rating columns. Each row represents a single rating given by a user to a movie. The data frame has total 100,836 rows. This data frame is the core data for the recommendation system, containing the preferences of different users for various movies. Let's look at the movie's data frame as well. It contains information about the movies included in the data set. We have movie ID and title columns here, and each row represents a single movie. There are total 9,742 rows in this data frame. This information is crucial for associating ratings with specific movies in the recommendation system. Now let's pre-process the data. We'll merge the ratings and movies data sets and create a user item matrix. This merge function merges the ratings and movies data frames based on the common column movie ID. This creates a new data frame data where each row represents a rating for a specific movie by a specific user. Here we use the pivot table function to reshape the data frame into a pivot table. In this function, the index parameter sets the user IDs as the rows. The columns parameter sets the movie titles as the columns. The values parameter specifies the values to fill the cells, which are the ratings. This creates a matrix where each row represents a user, each column represents a movie, and the values in the cells are the ratings given by that user to that movie. And this filna function fills any missing values in the matrix with zero. This is important because users might not have rated all movies. Let's print the data to see how the result of merging the ratings and movies data frames looks like. As we can see all four columns user ID, movie ID, rating, and title in the output. Each row represents a single rating given by a user to a movie along with the corresponding movie title. This data frame provides a combined view of user movie interactions and movie titles, making it easier to analyze and understand the data. It's a valuable resource for building the recommendation system. If we look at the user item matrix data frame, which is a crucial data structure for the recommendation system, 
we can see it captures the user item interactions in a structured format, which is essential for finding similar users and making recommendations based on those similarities. Each cell contains the rating given by a specific user to a specific movie. A value of zero indicates that the user hasn't rated that movie. As we are using a small data set, there are less number of ratings available. In this table, there are 610 rows and 9,719 columns, so there are a lot of ratings in our data, which is enough for our simple recommendation system. Next, we'll calculate the cosine similarity between users to find similar users. This code calculates the cosine similarity between users based on their ratings in the user item matrix. Cosine similarity is a common metric used to measure the similarity between two vectors, in this case, the user rating vectors. As we can see, the output is a square matrix where each row and column represents a user. The value at the intersection of row i and column j represents the cosine similarity between user i and user j. This resulting matrix represents the pairwise similarity between all users based on their ratings. It will be used to find the most similar users for a given user, which is a key step in collaborative filtering recommendation algorithms. Now that we have all the data prepared, let's find the most similar users for a given user. We define a function find similar users that finds the most similar users to a given user based on the calculated cosine similarity matrix. In this function first, we get the index of the specified user ID in the user item matrix index. This index is used to access the corresponding row in the user similarity matrix. Then we extract the row corresponding to the user ID from the user similarity matrix. This row contains the cosine similarities between the target user and all other users. Then we use the argsort function to sort the similar users array in descending order to find the most similar users. This slicing selects the indices of the top n most similar users, excluding the user itself. Finally, we return the user IDs corresponding to the indices of the most similar users. In the output, we can see a list containing the user IDs of the most similar users to the specified user ID. Now, it is time to generate movie recommendations for a given user based on the ratings of similar users. This function generates movie recommendations for a given user based on the ratings of similar users. The find similar users function is called to find the most similar users to the target user ID. Then we get ratings of similar users by filtering the user item matrix to include only the rows corresponding to the similar users. Here we calculate the average rating for each movie among similar users. Finally, we sort and select top recommendations. The average ratings are sorted in descending order, and the top n movies with the highest average ratings are selected as recommendations. In the output, we can see the recommended movies for user 4 and their average ratings from similar users. The recommended movies for user 4 include classics like Rear Window, The Godfather, and Groundhog Day, suggesting that user 4 might enjoy similar types of movies. This demonstrates how collaborative filtering can be used to generate personalized recommendations. Let's evaluate the model's performance by comparing the recommendations with the actual ratings. In this evaluate model function, we evaluate the performance of the recommendation system for a given user. It calculates precision, recall, and F1 score based on the recommended movies and the user's actual ratings. First, we get the top N recommended movies for the user from the generate recommendations function. Then we find the intersection between the recommended movies and the movies that the user has actually rated. Then we assess the performance of the model using the precision, recall, and F1 score evaluation metrics. Precision measures the proportion of recommended movies that are actually relevant to the user. It's calculated as the number of common movies divided by the total number of recommended movies. Recall measures the proportion of relevant movies that the model actually recommended. It's calculated as the number of common movies divided by the total number of movies that the user has rated. F1 score is the harmonic mean of precision and recall, providing a balanced measure of the model's performance. The output shows the calculated precision, recall, and F1 score for the given user. The precision is 1.0, indicating that all recommended movies were relevant to the user. 
However, the recall and F1 score are low, 0.02 and 0.04, suggesting that the model missed many relevant movies that the user has rated. This highlights the trade-off between precision and recall and F1 score in recommendation systems. And that's how you build a simple recommendation system using collaborative filtering with Scikit-Learn. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more AI Bytes. If you have any questions or want to see a specific topic covered, let us know in the comments below. See you next time.